What's up, family? We have some major new updates in regards to our Social Security recipients. New payment increases may actually be on the way, and these could be around $485 per month. Now, President Biden recently signed the debt deal or bill, which pretty much saves Social Security monthly payments to continue to arrive this month. Now, I actually have the payment schedule that I want to share with you in this video as well. And then also, uh, I have a few changes that we may see this year or even next year if President Biden gets what he wants before he leaves office. So if you appreciate the content that we bring to you every single day, be so kind and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you could hit the like button as it really helps us out. Now let's go ahead and jump into the video. Starting off, President Biden recently signed the bipartisan bill that was the debt ceiling bill into law, which is basically suspending the debt limit until the year of 2025. Now, this particular bill also included some cuts in spending, which we, he was not necessarily happy about, but he had to do what he had to do in order to avoid a default, a catastrophe for the United States economy. Now, like I said, within just two days ago, uh, President Biden signed this particular piece of legislation into law on Saturday. Saturday evening, uh, which pretty much lifted the nation's debt ceiling in which the deadline in which the United States was expected to run out of money was June the 5th, which he signed this bill particularly 48 hours before that actually happened. So that is some definitely uh, good news to hear. But uh, in regards to this particular bipartisan debt deal, we did actually hear from President Biden and what he felt like uh, the results was of signing this particular debt deal. And I want to share that with you today. Now, just for a little bit of context, the final agreement of the negotiations in regards to the debt ceiling deal between President Biden, as well as the House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy, uh, that particular final agreement was actually passed by the House on last Wednesday, and it was passed by the Senate on Thursday, which was suspend the debt limit until the year of 2025. Now, again, uh, raising the nation's debt limit, which is now around 31 Point four trillion dollars will actually ensure that the government can borrow to pay its debts already incurred, which we will continue to do that for years and years to come, guys. But anyways, we did hear directly from President Biden in which uh, he put out a statement and said, look, passing the budget agreement was very critical. The stakes could not have been any higher, according to President Biden, in which he made this statement from the Oval Office. He made this statement on Friday evening, and he also said that, look, nothing would have been more catastrophic than defaulting on the country's debt. No one got everything that they wanted, but the American people got what they actually needed, highlighting the compromise and the consensus in the debt deal. He said, look, we averted an economic crisis and an economic collapse. So anyways, guys, he is pretty much saying that right here in this dire warning message of what it could actually have been if he was unable to go ahead and do uh, some cut spending as well as uh, losing a other few things that he had been pretty much pushing for from the White House, uh, he said that, look, he pretty much avoided an economic crisis. And I would say that I would agree with that. So we are definitely happy and excited that President Biden actually lowered uh, his expectations in regards to what he actually wanted from the Republicans to get this deal done as well as get it passed and get it signed before the U.S. runs out of money. So uh, kudos to President Biden for making this actually happen. But he went a step further, guys, and he also talked about a deep cut that he actually had to incur uh, because of the big push from the Republicans. But he did say that one thing that he would not stand for is cuts to Social Security, in which he said right here, guys, he said that, look, we're cutting spending and bringing deficits down at the same time. We're protecting important priorities from Social Security to Medicare, to Medicaid, to veterans, to our transformational investments in infrastructure, as well as in clean energy. He said even as he pledged to continue working with the Republicans, Biden also drew contrast with the opposing party, particularly when it comes to raising taxes on the wealthy, something that the Democratic president has sought for many, many times before. So again, guys, he said, that, look, I'm going to be coming back, he said, with your help, I'm going to win. 
Yes, guys, he is referring to uh, running for the 2024 presidential election in which he wants to come back to the White House to finish off a few things that he was unable to do right now during his first session. But uh, anyways, guys, between you and I, I do not think that he will actually win the next presidential election. I'm just saying, guys. But uh, anyways, guys, he can continue to have big hopes and big dreams, but I do not think it will actually happen. But the good news is that, guys, we don't have to worry about the debt ceiling for at least another two more years. So uh, anyways, guys, like I said, kudos to President Biden. Now, in addition to that, guys, I do have a bit of schedule in regards to uh, Social Security, and that is because those Social Security monthly payments, they will continue to come on starting this month. At first, Social Security recipients were actually worried whether or not they were actually going to receive their payments for the month of June. But uh, since this particular debt deal was actually signed, hey guys, those payments will continue to arrive this month. And I do want to share that information with you. It says right here, guys, that when will you receive your Social Security check? Well, guys, you can see right here that it says that the payment dates this month are as follows. Uh, June 1st has already passed, but the SSI payments were actually paid out on June the 1st. For June the 3rd, Social Security benefits are paid for people who filed prior to May of 1997 or who received both Social Security and SSI checks. Uh, and then uh, later on next week, uh, June the 14th, Social Security benefits are paid for individuals born between June the 1st and June the 10th. And then for June the 21st, Social Security benefits are paid for individuals that were born between June the 11th and June the 20th. And then on June the 28th, Social Security benefits are paid for individuals born between the dates of June the 21st through June the 31st. So anyways, guys, those are just a few of the payments that are going out this month. And then also don't forget, guys, this month there will actually be two SSI payments. Now, the first SSI payment came on June the 1st, and then the second payment and it's actually going to come at the end of this month on June the 30th. Now, guys, this is all because of July the 1st, which is the SSI payment date, actually falls on a Saturday in which any time SSI payments fall on a weekend or either fall on a holiday, they are actually going to move that payment up to the previous uh, week or date, which is going to fall on the month of June, which is falling on June the 30th. And as you can see right here, guys, on the calendar. You can see that June the 30th is on a Friday, which obviously means that July the 1st falls on a Saturday. So that is why you're going to be receiving two SSI payments for the month of June. But then again, you won't receive a payment for the month of July. So anyways, guys, uh, you will be receiving that check later on this month at the end of this month. So you do want to be mindful of that. And that is in regards to the SSI payments. Now, moving on, guys, we do have a little bit of an article right here that talks about four social security shakeups from President Biden that could actually hit your wallet, hit your pocketbooks by the year of 2024. And this will also include an increase, a monthly increase of at least $485. So I definitely want to share that information with you right here. And here we are, guys, as it says that as Social Security Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund faces depletion by the year of 2033, President Joe Biden has suggested that a sweeping four-point plan to bolster the social security funds in the trust that will also help fill the 22.4 trillion dollar funding shortage shown in the 2023 trustees report now guys like I said, this is in regards to the insurance trust fund that holds the Social Security trust funds, the money in that particular fund that is used to pay out payments or checks every single month. And this is exactly what President Biden has in store in order to increase the amount of funds in this trust fund. So I definitely want to share that with you right here, guys. The first one on the list is that he wants to implement payroll taxes for income people that make over $400,000 per year year. It says currently an earned income below $160,000 is subject to a 12.4% payroll tax. Now earnings exceeding that amount are not subject to OASI taxes and Biden plans to tax earned income above $400,000 leaving wages above $160,000 up to $400,000 untaxed. This is how he wants to raise additional income to go into the Social Security Trust Fund over time. And with, I believe I saw here previously that 
if he is able to do this, guys, that is going to generate trillions of dollars to be added to the Social Security Trust Fund. So uh, anyways, guys, that is one of the first shakeups that he wants to actually happen. And then the second shakeup that he wants is that he wants to change the way that COLA or either the cost of living adjustment, uh, the increases are actually calculated. Now, this guys, this has been talked about for a quite some time now, but they have yet to do it. But it looks like they are getting very close to actually making this particular change. Now, what it does, it says that each year Social Security benefits are assessed based on the inflation and the adjusted through cost of living adjustment or better known as the COLA increase. Uh, currently, the administration uses the consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, which is also known as the CPIW, uh, to calculate COLA. But this particular number doesn't necessarily reflect the lifestyle and the expenses of retired people, of our seniors, of our Social Security recipients. So they want to shift the COLA calculations to figures tied to the consumer price index for the elderly, uh, which won't solve the problem of Social Security running out of money, but it could put more money into the pockets of retired Americans who need it the most. So anyways, guys, like I said, we have talked about this for quite some time and it looks like they are getting very close to making these particular changes, which would pretty much put more money per month into the pockets of those individuals that need this money the most. So anyways, guys, that is a huge change that we look forward to having. And then the third thing on the list, guys, is it, that he wants to increase the primary insurance amount. Now, guys, uh, this is also known as the PIA, which is, stands for the primary insurance amount, which is a figure that indicating how much money you will receive in Social Security benefits, depending on the age you begin claiming your benefits and the average index monthly earnings. Now, increasing the PIA for Americans aged between 78 and 82 years old would help those experience rising expenses such as health care later on in life. So again, guys, he wants to increase the PIA number, which would definitely put more money into the pockets of our retirees as well as our seniors. And then last but not least, guys, he also wants to increase the special minimum benefit for lifetime lower wage workers. Now, guys, pay attention to this, guys, because because it says that low wage earners receive a special minimum benefit regardless of how much money they made while they actually were working in the work field. But in 2023, a lifetime low earnings worker would receive just $12,402 in social security benefits annually or $1,033.50 per month. Now, President Biden intends to increase the minimum benefit to 125% of the poverty level for an individual. So as an example, in 2023, someone receiving the special minimum benefit would actually receive around $1,518 per month with this specific boost or this special minimum benefit boost. So guys, uh, that necessarily equates to an increase in the amount of money that you receive every single month. Now, guys, you want to know exactly how much this increase is? Well, I have a handy calculator right in front of me. And so we want to do the math live right in front of you guys. So, so let's just go ahead and put in the numbers, guys. It is $1,518.75. So if we do that right here, $1,518.75. Minus, I believe it was the current amount is one thousand and thirty three dollars. And what is it? Fifty cents. Fifty cents equals that is an increase of four hundred and eighty five dollars and twenty five cents per month. Guys, did you hear me? $485.25 per month of an increase for our Social Security recipients. This is going to be huge. But like I said, guys, this is per month. Let's go ahead and multiply this by 12 to see exactly how much of an increase it is per year. Now, if we multiply this by 12 months per year, this is an increase, guys, of $5,823 per year. Guys, we are definitely going to be praying for this increase. We are going to be praying that President Biden is able to get this done before he leaves office. Guys, this could be huge. Again, guys, we definitely want something like this, guys, because we know that our Social Security recipients deserve this particular money. We know that they need this type of money, especially after we have seen the most 
biggest, the largest increase in inflation that we have ever seen, guys, in over the last 40 years. So our Social Security recipients, our seniors, those individuals on SSI, SSDI, uh, our VA beneficiaries, they are all struggling right now, guys. So we definitely need to push and hope and pray that President Biden is able to get this type of legislation done before he leaves office. But again, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that this increase needs to be made or do you think that Social Security recipients are already receiving enough? Let me know down below in the comment section, guys, how you feel about this increase that President Biden wants to get done before he leaves office in 2024, guys. But anyways, guys, hey, this is some awesome news. And uh, like I said, guys, we are hoping, we are pushing, we are uh, praying that this actually gets done in the near, near future. But anyways, guys, I hope all this information in this video was helpful to you today. Well, anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. But if you enjoyed today's content and you want to see more, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like today's video, then go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. And I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.